You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Today I have with me Steve Hook, the Emergency Management Director for the City of Brockton. Steve, nice to see you. Hi, Mark. Nice to be back. You always are doing something with emergency management. Oh, yeah. um, preparation is key. Um, there's, you have a small staff, you have a small budget, but you've got a great working relationship with the public safety personnel in Brockton, the police department, the fire department, and now you have a nice emergency operations center over in the War Memorial. What's new, what's different, what's the latest thing? Um, I know you also depend on community volunteers to, to function in, in, in an emergency situation. What's new? So we are, the, the Emergency Management Agency is a city department that is made up of two part-time employees. Mm -hmm. uh, we do rely on our community emergency response team, the CERT team, uh, which is uh, made up of over 90 members now, which I'm proud to say. Um, we do do a lot of training with the CERT team, um, with our staff, uh, preparing for emergencies, planning for emergencies and disasters. You know, the city has a great public safety departments, police, fire. They can handle the day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day situations that they encounter. It's when things are, you have these large-scale situations like the blizzard last year uh, where we had the National Guard in five times to assist us. Um, stuff like that, the water main break, those type of things where we need outside resources, state and federal resources, that's when the Emergency Management Agency typically gets involved in coordinating those outside agencies. So <clears throat> we rely on our CERT team uh, to help us with that, uh, making calls, sometimes in, in response to um, certain situations. Well, if you look on the news, not here specifically, but um, I think I'd rather put up with the snow and the blizzards than the tornadoes we saw yes. that are going on with golf ball size hail yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, you you hit baptism by fire with the blizzard. I mean, you, you yeah. came in, it wasn't, if you go way back, a few years back when Units was mayor, they, he got hit right away when he was first there, but it, it happened to, to Mayor Carpenter as well, and you were, yeah. new, you were new to the job at that point. So tell me a little bit about that whole experience and how, how people banded together and how you got through it. So uh, you're absolutely right. We, we were all new. The mayor was new. Larry Raleigh, the DPW commissioner, was new. I was new. Um, and we just, we just opened the War Memorial uh, Emergency Operations Center like two months before we just moved into that building. And as you know, we received historic snowfall. Um, I'll tell you about the Emergency Operations Center for people who are not aware of what it is. It's a, it's a room that uh, where it's a place where people can come, leaders of the city can come mm -hmm. and sit and make decisions on a situation going on. So um, <clears throat> during those blizzards, we, we operated out of the emergency operations center for days. Department heads, um, the mayor, um, and we sat around the table collectively and made decisions on what's, how to handle that snowfall. Um, and at some point we realized that, you know, it, there's a lot of it, and we need to bring in the National Guard to help. We didn't have, the city did not have the resources to move uh, that amount of snow. So we needed to bring in some additional help, and, and that's what if, we did. If you have power outages, you have to come up with warming centers. In yep. the summer when it's hot, you're involved with cooling centers, and, um, you know, you, you, you do, you know, preparation drills, and, and you know, I know... You were in the process of doing an emergency medication dispensing drill because if you think about it, we're, even though we're not in Plymouth, we're not too far from a nuclear reactor mm -hmm. and there's medication that's given out. Talk about something like that and, and that's where CERT gets involved and people get trained and, and people can still join. You're looking for CERT people. Well, we right? absolutely are looking for CERT people and if you are, if I can just throw a plug in, if you are interested in, in joining CERT, um, visit the city website, click on the Emergency Management Agency, and there's an application, a phone number that you can call. Our phone number is 508-580-7871. Um, and and anybody can join. Um, you know, we, we need all types of people. We need people that can 
who, you know, we have some people that say, hey, I'm interested in joining CERP, but I don't want to be in the field. Uh, you know, I want to sit behind a desk. That's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. We need people to answer telephones. Uh, a lot of times when we have these emergencies or disasters, we, we uh, set up the Mayor's Storm Hotline or the Mayor's Hotline where we can field questions from the residents. Uh, we do that a lot. Um, but training is key. Um, as a part of the CERT team, you will receive free training, um, you know, specialized training in uh, medical, first, first responder, um, light search and rescue, fire safety, stuff that you can use in your everyday life, um, CPR, and then you know, when, we, when there's a, there is an emergency, we can call you up and you can u utilize that training uh, in the field or in the office. Now, I know last year, I, I'm not sure if it was the spring or the summer, I'm trying to forget, remember, not forget, um, there was a gentleman who was missing mm -hmm. in Brockton. You guys were involved in, in something like that along with law enforcement to, yes. to supplement. Yep. So we worked hand in hand with the police department and the fire department for this missing elderly gentleman who, who was an all-timers patient. And, and that day was probably one of my proudest moments in the city um, because the CERT team uh, had a, a direct influence on finding uh, that gentleman. So what happened, Mark, was <clears throat> we were asked to assist and the CERT team distributed flyers mm -hmm. around the neighborhoods. Um, police department and, and fire department, they, they were searching the wooded area while the CERT team was handing out these flyers. And we handed a flyer to a gentleman uh, who owned an auto mechanics uh, building and he was on his lunch break and he decided to go out and maybe search on his own and he, event he eventually found this gentleman. Hmm. Um, so it, it was a very happy moment. Uh, he was, the gentleman was alive. Um, so the CERT team does did have a direct influence on that, so we're very happy about that outcome. Now on the volunteers, because Brockton is such a diverse place, mm -hmm. okay, you and I are talking English, we're, yep. we're on TV, but there's a huge Cape Verdean population, sure. Haitian population, Brazilian, different languages are spoken here. Do you need any people Absolutely. on the CERT team that speak other languages? Absolutely. We have some people that speak uh, foreign languages, but we need more. Uh, during emergencies, we have to uh, get the message out in a number of languages. There's over 150 different languages spoken in the city here. So, yes, we encourage people uh, who can speak other languages to become members of the CERT team. And there's no pressure. You can get as much training as you want. Absolutely. There's as little training as you want, and you can do different things. You can, you know, people have different skills, different backgrounds. If you think about what just happened with the tragic event, you know, down in Taunton, you know, the guy was an off-duty sheriff mm -hmm. sitting having dinner with his wife I mean stuff like that hopefully won't hap ha happen here and we don't have to deal with it but you never know you never and know. missing people missing children like you said an Alzheimer's patient um, you know the water main thing was a big deal I mean that affected us for days you guys were passing out water helping people out um, I mean we were affected by this before you were on the job we had the water main break right in front of this building uh, right. the home cafe had it a couple of times there yep. and the big one that happened was, you know, pretty pretty stressful at that point in time. Um, so if people want to get involved, again, the phone number is 508-580-7871. That's the emergency management number. And like Steve said, if you go to the city website, it's pretty user-friendly these days. Click on a man emergency management and find the information for CERT. You fill out some paperwork. I did it. I, I, I'm... I'm going to be out in a storm. I used to have a joke with your predecessor, Mort Schleffer, that uh, just come and get me in the duck boat on the way <laughs> in. He lived around the corner from me. Just pick me up on the way because we're going to have to post a message on cable or do something like that. And we've mm -hmm. been talking about collaborations and stuff like that, we too. Haven't. Anything I missed that you might want to add in to fill no, up the I, show? I think, you know, luckily there aren't emergencies every day. And, and when there's, there's downtime, uh, the emergency management agency is planning. We We have something called a comprehensive emergency management plan uh, that covers almost everything you can think of. Um, a plan for everything. So um, we're required to do that by law. So we're constantly updating that plan, working with police fire the mayor's office to update those plans, making sure we have uh, 
a, a list of database of what we have for resources in the city, um, <clears throat> stuff like that. So we're going to talk about that the next time I have you. Okay. How's that? All right. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for being on Greater Brockton. Thanks, Mark. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the city of Champions.